right thank you everyone for inviting me to do this uh, i would like to acknowledge this article by professor alit gunatilaka on which i have drawn for some of the information in these slides because i am not really an economist now this is first of all a definition of an economy and you can read it for yourself but there are certain key words that i have highlighted in red and i have described the impact uh, of those uh, the impact arising from those below uh, it must also be made said that uh, you know the economy is sometimes measured in what is called the gross domestic product of a country sri lanka's current gross domestic product is us dollars 4000 uh, per capita on average so as a result of covid-19 we can see that there is little or no production where consumption is concerned consumption is both continuing as before because for things like food and medicine and it is also reduced because people are no longer going to movie theaters and restaurants and things like that so the consumption is reduced so all of this has an effect on the economy and one of the most significant things where the economy is concerned is that this production and consumption are interrelated and because of the closure of our borders and also the lockdowns that we are experiencing that interconnected has interconnectedness has been compromised now these are some of the impacts that uh, we can expect on sri lanka not only really now but uh, for some time to come tourism garment exports tea consumption especially the impact on the informal sector 48% of workers are participating in this informal sector people like tri shirt drivers people like small vendors and they are contributing to 40% of the gdp so their livelihoods and their contribution will be severely affected um, you can read this for yourself i'm going through these slides fairly quickly now these are some of the safe sectors again only relatively safe uh, the agricultural sector is okay because government is allowing cultivation which is good because we need food to survive on internet workers may be reasonably safe and those who are getting fixed salaries especially from the government they are relatively safe and also of course the rich now when an economy is in a crisis the government is expected to bail it out now the way they can do that is uh, to collect revenue through things like taxes and if they don't have enough money from the taxes they collect they have to take loans but the government at the moment has reduced taxes and is also heavily in debt uh, especially to overseas lenders so our current economic uh, outlook is not very rosy it's quite bleak so these are the some of the things that the government can do to promote the economy you know make concessions especially to the informal sector like i said before the informal sector 48% of workers contributing 40% of the gdp make short term work allowances for them and all of this of course they have to do uh, in addition to spending money to control the virus so there is a lot of spending that the government has to do now in order to do that uh, government will have to find ways in order to collect money as well and these may be unpopular but these are some of the suggestions that have been made so right on the opening page there is an internet link to this article by professor gunathilaka many of these things that i am mentioning with respect to the economy can be found there now we can ask whether safety or health is more important or the economy now this balance of course is difficult to get right and different countries have used different approaches it partly depends on how prepared the health system is with respect to testing facilities for this covid-19 also the number of hospitals and intensive care unit beds and also to attitudes regarding personal liberty versus centralized control western democracies value personal liberty they do not like shutdowns whereas asian countries may think that shutdowns are okay also we have to ask the question that if you are rich you might prefer to be safe but if you are poor and you lose your livelihood as a result of the shutdown then you might be willing to take some risks with respect to health because uh, even if you die 
don't die due to, through COVID-19. You might die because of, uh, you know, starvation and malnutrition. So, so these are difficult questions to answer. Right. Now, this slide is a bit of a technical slide, but gives you an idea as to how we can decide between the amount of safety and the amount that you allow the economy to, uh, to function. Uh, now, these are all the measures that can be taken to uh, reduce the spread of COVID-19. If you do not take any of these measures, all these numbers add up to 2.13, I think. You can check it for yourself. So, that means on average, 2.13 people will be infected by every single infected individual. But we want to get that number to below 1. Now, the fellow who wrote this article called Thomas Pueyo says we should take these measures. Yes, yes, yes. If we take those measures, the economy will be affected by these amounts. And if we uh, take these measures, then of course, uh, uh, the, the remaining uh, R values, they will add up to 0.89. So, it is below 1. Now, Sri Lanka may be wanting to get this to much closer to zero so that the spread is even further reduced uh, because we have done things like closing schools and universities, asking people to remain at home, most services close. So, these cost a lot, but the R value will become close to zero. So, it appears that Sri Lanka at the moment is pursuing a policy of uh, uh, prioritizing health over the economy. So, we have to uh, wait and see what impacts that has and how it's going to affect uh, the country as a whole and also uh, uh, relatively. Now, when we consider this question, we have to look at all the disparities between rich and poor people and I have listed some of them down, but especially the differences with respect to work. Uh, because uh, people who get salaries at the end of their months due to work, they are in a very different situation to people who have to go out and earn their daily wages and so their li lives are, are very severely affected. So what can Christians do? Now, first of all, I will point you to an article by Professor Tom Wright uh, and the link is provided here. He says that one of the things that we can do, especially during this time of Lent, is to engage in lamenting. Lamenting for our condition, lamenting for whatever way that we have contributed to creating these situations and especially creating the disparities between people. Uh, and also crying to God and recognizing our human weakness because especially in the modern age, people feel that they have all the answers. Now, for once, the world does not seem to have a clear answer. Then also to be compassionate and to share. And I will just end this very brief presentation by giving you some idea about something that you can do with respect. So, this is an initiative by an organization called Sri Lanka Unites, interreligious, interracial organization, but originally uh, initiated by a Christian. And uh, it gives what they are proposing to do with respect to daily wage earners, um, you know, putting together a packet of food for their families. And it also gives an account number into which you or your parents or other people known to you can contribute. So I am, uh, I don't have anything to do with this organization, but I am suggesting it because it is an initiative that I am aware of. If you yourselves want to do something, then you can get some ideas about you know, the amount of money you have to spend on a packet and what kind of things that you can think about putting into it, right? So, there are, of course, many other things that probably Christians can do and I will leave it to you to discuss it. But uh, I am going to end my very brief presentation, uh, you know, with these few words. Uh, look at the internet links once, once again. Uh, think carefully about the different way in which COVID-19 affects the economy both on a global scale and a local scale and think, I think, where, where the economy especially is concerned about daily wage earners. I think that is something that uh, we can dwell on and think about. Okay, thank you very much.